Hi, this is Nosratala Nezafati from TCC Southeast Campus. This is on-campus orientation for COSC 1436. Traditionally, I used to run this orientation actually physically on campus, and a student had a chance to come and visit me in my office on campus. The purpose of this orientation is to get you acquainted with how we operate this course from this campus, and if you have any comments, questions concerning the physical activities, the lab assignment, you can refer to this video and the content of it, or you can directly call me and contact me and we'll resolve your issue. First, let's start with the basic of how the course is being laid out for you for 16 weeks. As you have seen on the other video that's called online orientation, the course is set up for 180 hours of work that you do throughout the semester. That is roughly about 12 hours every week. We have six labs, three exams, and 10 quizzes. Quizzes are part A, part B, multiple choice, true, false, and the coding from the chapter in the book. We expect you to spread your work throughout the semester so you would not follow behind the schedule. The labs are very easy. The first lab is basically doing a design. There is no coding involved in the lab. In fact, there's an example of lab one PowerPoint presentation on the Blackboard and also a YouTube version of it on the YouTube for those people who want to see how it's being put together. Either way, the lab is very simple. Uh, the problem statement is how to produce a BL for a flooring project that you have in an office area. And we use the structured methodology, breaking a problem to solve problem and solve problem to solve problem till we can break down the problem any further. Then we use pseudocoding and flowcharting to put our design solution to this problem. Uh, I emphasized a couple of points in my orientation. One is this project that you do is a miniature of what's happening outside in the real world. So we expect you to do as much professional job on it as you can by documenting and commenting, writing user instruction, so clearly can express a solution to a problem that anybody can understand and follow. Lab two is very simple, basic lab. I call it input process output. Uh, the problem statement is very simple, very easy. It asks you to produce a revenue sheet for a theater. And it prompts the user to ask him, what's the name of the movie? How many tickets you sold for child? How many tickets you sold for adults? And you know the price of each of these tickets for child and adult. And you calculate and give the portion of it for the distributor part of it to the uh, movie theater uh, people. So uh, this project has coding. In fact, there is an example of the flowcharting in the lessons if you look for it on the lessons on Blackboard. We need to have everything in this project. We need to have the problem statement, uh, sample input, sample output. We need to have the whole program package that you produce, comment, user instruction, the whole nine yard. Again, there's a list of things that is being asked to be prepared for these labs. And they are very common on the cover sheets that you see, especially with this lab. All the items on the cover sheet is needed for lab two and after. For lab one, really, you don't have any coding, so you don't have the coding part, but you do have the other parts to just show for it. Lab three is a little bit more larger in depth. It's basically statement telling you a telephone company allows a customer to make call and given three different rates during the date, rate A, rate B, rate C, during different time zone. Uh, your program should prompt the user ask them the starting time for their call and the duration of their call. Then your program should handle 
how the call is being calculated for the charges. Once you start in one zone, it stays the same for the rest of the conversation, whether it stays in the same zone or goes over to the next trade zone. And also, it wants you to calculate what's the end time for that conversation. Uh, some calls may go over one day from start of the day uh, in the beginning of the conversation and adding the number of minutes that put you to the next day, we want you to have a little message that says next day. So you need to have a little bit more logic into it using conditional statement and verifying that you are in the same day or the next day. Uh, the next lab is lab four. Lab four is the core essence of this course. Lab four is uh, allowing you to break a problem into some problem just like you did in your design of lab one. But in this lab, you're gonna actually code for your solution. And the problem statement basically says, calculate the bidding charge for the people who come and park in the garage. Uh, you prompt the user ask what type of vehicle are they parking. You can have a car, bus, or a truck. And then starting time, hours, and minutes, and ending time, hours and minutes. To make it very simple, this lab doesn't really allow you to carry to the next day. So you start on the same day basis. Uh, each of these vehicle types, they have different rates with different duration of timing. So uh, you end up breaking your problem into uh, sub-problems of getting the user information, calculating the rate, calculating the time, uh, calculating the total charges and printing the bill. But this is very simple. There's an example of it uh, on the YouTube and you can contact me and kind of follow how we put the lab together. The purpose of this lab is really to make you understand how the function will work from calling into the main program using a structure form of breaking problem to solve problem. So your main program should be nothing more than five function calls. Again, uh, this is very easy, very simple. We're gonna introduce to you the concept of passing the data by value or passing by reference, which I want you to use in this lab. When you get to that chapter, I believe it's chapter six in the book, you get to know a little bit more about functions. So you don't have to worry about it right now. Uh, the next lab, lab five, is much easier than lab four. I got two parts. We use the recursive function call to put together two separate projects in this lab. One is Fibonacci series. The other one is uh, calculating the Napurian number E. So again, the example of it is on the YouTube. You can uh, follow through. Any lab that you turn into me, you're welcome to ask me after these labs and uh, answer the questions. But you have to make sure at the end when you turn in your project, you are the one that is responsible for the solution and you should know how it works. If I ask you how did your program work, uh, simply saying my team members made it work and I would just call it team, it does not give you any credit. You've got to show me that you understood the solution to a problem. At lab six, it is your turn to show me what you have learned throughout the course. Basically, uh, you read a, a text file which has students in the class with their ID and their grades, for exam one, exam two, exam three, and their quizzes and the lab, just like your uh, syllabus for this course, which have each grade coming from different part of the activities. Uh, then you produce a report for the teacher showing each student and their course score and the letter grade that they get. And at the end, you're gonna produce a report showing the distribution in the histogram for uh, how many A's, how many B's, C's, D's, and so forth, so forth and so on. This lab, I do not help any because this is the time I want to see how much of these material you have learned from this course, reading a file, processing the data, and producing an output. Uh, there are three exams. The exams are about uh, two hours to two and a half hours, uh, pretty much covering all the chapters in the book. The final is comprehensive. Again, you can look at the grade distribution, how it works and everything. Now, for the quality control purposes, uh, we used to call the student 
to come in and take the exams on campus. Now we took that part away so it's a little bit more flexible for the student. However, uh, we have to make sure that you are the student that registered for the course who is actually taking the activities and getting the grade. What we want to do is sure that at random if we call somebody to do live examples on webcam connection to do the activity, they are the one that actually register for the course. I ask everybody with an email that I send at the beginning of the class to send me a picture, ID picture form of your current uh, picture so I put it on file so I can compare it. Uh, from time to time I call you to uh, either use Google Class or any other mean to kind of chat with me to see how you are doing and how is everything going on. Uh, if you have to come to Southeast Campus, we are in the building ESCT. Uh, my room is 2210A, and we have lab facilities. These are all on second floor. Uh, their operation hour is 7 to 9.59, Monday to Thursday. Friday, they are open from 7 to 5, uh, and they're closed after, after that. And Saturday, they're open from, again, uh, 7 to 2 in the afternoon. They are closed on Sunday. Uh, I really wish you good luck and I'm going to continue to post an argument to this section as need might be. Uh, if any question comes up, I try to clear the way. Uh, please feel free to contact me, email me, or drop by my office. Have a nice day. Um, bye.